My name is Prasad. So today we're going to see uh, we are going to discuss about uh, dealing with locators across browsers. Is there any better way to do that? So as you can see, there are three that matter the most in cross-browser test automation. Locator, locator and locator. So how many of you had issues dealing with locators, especially across the different browsers? So do you all agree that locator is the main issue that you usually have a lot of problems dealing with? So the question remains, how do you find the right one? So here is your agenda. Learn best practices to identify the ideal locator for automation. Let's see if it exists. Learn how to solve the challenges with picking the right locator for each browser and version. And learn how much time could be saved in implementing the recommended solution. As you all know, right, Selenium uses locators to find and match the elements of a web page that it needs to interact with. And locators are unique identifiers for one or more web elements on a web page. So Selenium offers various strategies that you can use to locate web elements. Starting from ID, name, tag name, XPath, CSS, etc. And each of which has their own uh, pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages. There are various situations wherein something might be of uh, 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 more help than the others. So we're not going to discuss each of them. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that you all already know about that. So at a high level, uh, locators can be categorized into structure-based and attribute-based locators. Uh, Structured-based, uh, you know, they rely on the structure of the page to find the elements. So like XPath, DOM, CSS, etc. So whenever there is a change in the page structure, your locators may uh, become uh, absolute. And attribute based locators rely on the attributes of the elements to locate them. Like identifier, ID, name, link, and again CSS, which basically has good balance between the structured based and attributes based locators. So let's have a, a quick uh, view of uh, uh, the pros and cons of uh, one or two locators. So the first one being the ID. It's the most specific one that can help locate an element on a page. And they are more reliable. So as long as the developer doesn't change the ID of, the lo ID of an element, right, it's not going to change. So you're depending on the ID. It's but the but the downside of it is you know it doesn't uh, 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 ensure that uh, it's unique on the page so it uh, it depends on the di uh, discipline of the developers and uh, uh, if they don't uh, follow the practices it may fail so maybe while you're recording you may be you know uh, your target element may be the third or fourth locator that has the same id but while running uh, it need not pick the uh, uh, it will pick the first one and most dynamic apps usually the you know database driven ones are uh, uh, dynamic uh, apps uh, wherein the content is uh, added dynamically to the pages uh, locators are unpredictable ids 
so it, it may not work in all the cases uh, similarly uh, if you come look at the x path so because it is structure uh, based one any changes to the structure of the html will invalidate your locators if they are using x path right the changes are expected and uh, you know, especially when your application is in uh, development stage you know developers uh, uh, they uh, you know uh, they change they keep changing the page right uh, because the uh, no design is final right so they keep uh, improving the page so the structure is not fixed and uh, xpath can be passed in both the ways top to bottom and uh, the other way and uh, xpath is not resilient enough in situations where development is progressed yep and the third one is the css uh, it's the fastest and most flexible and the browsers themselves use them for applying styles and it gives good balance between uh, using structure and attributes to find the elements so what it means is say suppose you have uh, say username password uh, inside a form uh, say for example in a login page so though the structure of that changes say, as long as you maintain the form itself intact right you can move that around and have your css uh, locator say you know within this id the form with this id under that this one right so even if the structure changes you, know, you can use css to uh, bring the uh, resilience into your uh, locator identification again there are uh, two ways where you, uh, you can locate uh, elements on a page so you can use it tools like selname id and then prepare your test cases your scripts and you can test the automated script in different browsers Uh, what are locators work in you know, for which browsers etc and if a locator works in most browsers but not all then use a specific different locator for just some browsers and versions so this takes some uh, some time and you need to you know give some trial and error and you know move back and forth between your implementation and recording uh, your uh, instructions and the, the other one is the engine engineered locators so this requires uh, uh, qa engineers or test engineers to spend extra time with your developers closely to understand the application analyze it understand it and work closely with them and uh, use various tools to identify all the available locators and then see which one suits in that particular situation say maybe you know ids may not work some uh, 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 like uh, for the dynamically generated content that if you intend to add it uh, to your applications so this uh, trial and error still exists but because you know you are working closely with developers and identifying upfront about okay you know which one suits better in this situation okay you know, let's not go with this you know uh, or maybe you know your html structure is uh, uh, fixed and you know you can use xpath in that situation or you can use css and when you have nested relationships engineering a locator works better so all this process is a little more time consuming but uh, is uh, more resilient to when compared to you know having locators recorded and you know then go to uh, your uh, implementation and then check whether that particular location works across the browsers or not let's see an example so a recorded locator could look like like this xpath which translates to search for a button which is the second element of the third element of the div which is again second element of the main so as you can see here as long uh, as the structure is intact it works but you know if the if the html changes right the, the locator is gone so engineered locator would look something like you know okay this is the element with the this tag and the identifier so button with id so and so a span with the class so and so so 
So we found two ways of doing that. So the challenge is not all locators work in all browsers and versions. Not all locators do the job in the same time in all the browsers. Same locators, some locators require more rework from developers. They need to spend extra time, effort, which translates into additional costs. And some locators are more resilient to changes to application over time than others. So which locator gives the biggest bang for the buck? So it's uh, the one that helps reduce the script maintenance and reliability. Is there anything else? Any questions so far? So currently, uh, to get the most of the, uh, the existing uh, solution that we have at hand, so okay, you know this is our uh, experience. So I'm going to share. So we try to overcome this problem by adding additional conditional logic, saying okay, you know if this is the browser, then do this, pick this one. So we need to do a lot of trial and error going back back and forth and then you know identifying different locators that work same for example for a, a long x path in ie it takes a lot of time or fails most of the times so we need to have conditional logic per browser and that uh, and that is additional work right and it's too time consuming so we tried for a better alternative So the alternate alternative that we came up with is try try all the locators until at least one succeeds. So one sec. So we try to record all the locators up, uh, that are available for a target element upfront. So uh, we used our own proprietary, uh, I mean, uh, ID recorder uh, that uh, works on top of Selenium that can record all the available locators uh, initially and uh, saves them in an XML uh, that we use for uh, storing uh, scripts. Basically, the uh, all the instructions which have the command target and value and not just one target so we try to save all the available locators into the XML itself and uh, if you're programming uh, so this is the recent addition to the uh, uh, source so I'm not a Java guy so we haven't tried it much but uh, uh, last minute addition to the presentation so uh, it claims that you know uh, you can use find all annotation in Java page factory and that will do the job for you. But this is at the runtime, execution time. And this is uh, this is while recording the script, right? And uh, during execution, you can loop through the available locators, taking the first one, try it out. If it fails, go to the next one. So do this until all the locators fail, or at least one passes, succeeds. So from the uh, IDE side, if you are tr using a IDE to uh, uh, record your scripts and locators, uh, like the Selenium IDE, it, it captures all the locators, but it uh, only stores the one that the user has uh, or, or the one that he switched last and if you save that script and then open it again so you have only one locator 
unless you find the element again, find all the locators available. So the change that we suggest to the community is make selenium ID record all the available locators of the target element and uh, something like you know this is an XML structure that we internally used uh, uh, so that saves all the available locators up front. So the possibilities at the execution side are endless so you can fine tune or uh, you know improvise on finding the locators and uh, uh, making sure that uh, the test scripts are not failing just because it couldn't find the locator. So again, this is the format. Uh, uh, the find all annotation will take all the locators found by various find by annotations. It, it can encompasses and then re returns them all in one list. So this is the recent uh, uh, one year back edition. So we haven't explored it uh, completely, so some of you can uh, continue. And uh, let's see some uh, uh, pseudo code. Uh, so here we are, uh, uh, this is uh, just a snapshot of uh, oh, at a high level what we uh, can do. So, so pick each locator one by one and then see if you can use it. And if it fails, go to the next one available in the list. So the benefits of this approach is you don't have to predetermine the optimal locator and all uh, locators by browser and version. So you can save going back, uh, you know, doing trial and error, going back and forth, and uh, you know you can save time there. And it gives more resilience to your scripts uh, uh, as your apps evolve. So what's beyond is you can find your execution automatically based on the user preference and past execution results. So what that means is you can switch the order of the application of locators based on the past pass or fail result. And you can switch the order of the application of locators based on past execution time as well because not all locators take the same amount of time uh, in all the browsers. So you can pick the fast, uh, the locator that uh, that was faster, uh, say when uh, both of them uh, are working, and you can skip the application of subset of locators. So the forever perfect locator still remained a myth. So there's no perfect and unbreakable locator because apps evolve, browsers evolve, and, and locators break. So developers experiment with UI design, streamline HTML and fix bugs, and HTML changes in apps make locators incompatible over time. And again, the cost of maintaining locators is considerable. That's it. Yes. So uh, how do you think the performance is going to be affected because of this? Mm -hmm. uh, we'll only go for the next one when the first one fails, right? Why 
while you while recording yeah if you are manually doing that identification right it it may be time consuming but if you in case if you are using a, a selenium id like thing you already have all the locators available Locators remain same. Some locators work, some locators may not work in the same pose. search grid uh, as an automatic recorder won't understand what is the component right it all it knows is it's a element it's a it's a basically it's a component web component but automatically we if at all we take a decision but it may not be genuine decision thank you Is there a way to validate exports in uh, IE? Let's say for Firefox, I have uh, Firepath. Similar kind of stuff for uh, IE. So the problem is I am having around 1000 plus distance, which is completely working fine on Firefox. But the same thing I want to validate on IE, IE10 actually. That's the reason why we have the solution, right? Thank you. 
question is is there any way to validate x pulse in ie browser I just want to know the x path of the concrete in I should know it in There is no way. I searched for this many times, but I never find any solution. In Excel sheet, they have written some macros and uh, they'll give you uh, this ready-made XPath for IE. Oh. You can uh, open your application in the Excel browser and just point it out and it will give you all the possible combinations of XPath, CSS, and locators. Nice. How do, how do we locate that way? Is that the way I mean, it's a macro which will open its internal browser and you can open the URL in that and do the same stuff. It's not that great, but works for initial things like we do with I Firefox IE. Nice. How do we get that? It's from Google Code. Uh, Google I forgot Code. its name. Um, I'll try to find out. Okay, fine. I have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.